Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, we have a special session tonight um, on getting a medical cannabis card. Um, and I'm joined here by our friends and partners at, Leaf, at LeafWell, uh, which is a telehealth platform focused around helping people uh, get medical marijuana cards. I'm going to hand straight over to Emily Fisher, who's the CEO and co-founder of LeafWell, to introduce herself and uh, the doctors that we have here with us for tonight's Q&A. Thank you so much, Alana. Yes, my name's Emily. I'm one of the founders of LeafWell. And uh, LeafWell is a platform that connects patients to a licensed physician in their state in order to get certified for medical cannabis. We exist in every state with a medical market, um, with a medical program rather. And I'm joined by two colleagues of mine, both medical directors at LeafWell. I've got Dr. George Gavrilos. Uh, Dr. George Gavrilos is a practicing cardiac critical care pharmacist specializing in mechanical circuitry support. Uh, Dr. Gavrilos has been really fundamental in putting together me the medical model that we use at LeafWell. I also have my colleague Dr. Lewis Jassy, who is a <laughs> who's a pediatrician and has been for over 26 years and ran the busiest clinic in New York. Um, both of my colleagues have really been at the forefront of medical cannabis and, and helping patients in this space. Great, thank, thank you for the introduction. Thank you so much for having us. It's truly a pleasure yes. and an honor to be here with your audience. Really excited to have you all here today. Um, so what we're going to go over is a little bit of kind of like paperwork and details about what it actually takes to get a medical marijuana card. Um, we'll go through a bit of the bureaucracy and process there. And then we're going to dig into a few questions that readers sent in already before the broadcast. But for anyone who's listening, um, you can send in questions on Facebook or on YouTube or LinkedIn, wherever you're watching, and we'll be able to answer those later in the session. Um, so, Emily, I think you're going to start us off today. Uh, we want to look into what the process of getting medical marijuana certification looks like. Yeah, no, absolutely. So the process of getting a, med a medical certification really does depend on which state you're in. Every state has its own process, its own qualifying conditions. And so the best thing to do uh, if you are wanting to join the medical program in your state is to head over to our website, which is leafwell.co, uh, select your state. And on there, we will, be out we will have outlined exactly what the steps are to becoming a patient in the state, um, exactly how long it takes and how much it costs as well. Um, one thing, though, that, uh, that applies to every single state is that you will need to see a licensed physician in your state and receive a doctor certificate confirming you have one of the qualifying conditions. And this is something that LeafWell is able to help you uh, with. So through our platform, people are able to go online, select their state and register and within minutes be seen by a doctor. Um, so once you've registered, you actually enter a virtual waiting room and within minutes, uh, a doctor, a licensed physician will be speaking with you. And once you're speaking to a doctor, it's, it's a little bit like FaceTime. So um, you, it's very similar to a consultation you would have in person. Um, and you can ask all of your questions. Um, I would say though, for people who are not familiar with the process of um, using telemedicine, which is basically what LeafWell allows you to do, um, the process is very, very simple. Um, in fact, one of the uh, core, um, or one of our objectives at LeafWell was to provide accessible care for every patient. And we appreciate that some people aren't familiar, um, you know, aren't, aren't very sort of, um, aren't particularly techno technology savvy. Um, so we really wanted to make that process very simple and very easy. Uh, so we, we, have, uh, we have made it so that as long as you have a phone or a computer, you can go online and all of the information you input is completely secure and HIPAA compliant as well. Okay, and can you tell us about timelines, Emily? Like how long does it normally take from, let's say someone goes onto the website now, how long until they'll actually have their medical card and we'll be able to uh, go to a dispensary and start um, trying products? Yeah, so the the process, um, the time does depend. Uh, usually, uh, as soon as you've seen a doctor, um, there are some states, once you've seen a doctor, you can actually go and buy your medicine right away. There are some states where you'll have to wait for your certificate, um, to for, for your medical card to arrive from the from the state. 
Um, what we do is we outline that on the on the website. So my, my advice is to anyone who is wanting to become a patient um, to go on the website and actually sort of see what steps are involved. Um, what we do at Leaf Well, though, is we do make it uh, painless and, and simple. We have 24-hour uh, support. So if you need help on any of those steps, we have people available 24 hours a day who can help you through that process. Um, the, the process is also of getting your of seeing a doctor online um, takes about 15 minutes across all of the states. And as soon as you've been approved, you receive your certificate from the doctor immediately. Okay, great. So let's talk a little bit about those 15 minutes. So you mentioned that it's like, you know, just doing a FaceTime or a WhatsApp video call. Um, what actually happens in that first consultation, though? What, what can patients expect to um, talk about? What questions are they going to be asked? What should they have prepared? Yeah. So the, oh, sorry, Dr. Jassy, did you want to? Oh, you know what? If, uh, if uh, you know, you want to go first, I, I can chime in afterwards from a doctor's perspective. Yeah, so from a, from a patient's perspective, you need several things for your doctor's appointment. You'll need um, a, a copy of your medical records, your state ID, perhaps prescriptions, and you'll need to enter all of your details. So those are things that you need for your doctor's appointment. Then uh, during your doctor's appointment, um, you can discuss sort of what your objectives are. What are you hoping to get out of cannabis? And this can be, you know, the, the reason you want to take cannabis, um, which will determine perhaps uh, what products you use, what time of day you take the products, uh, what consumption method as well. And so it's, it's important, I think, for people who are using cannabis for the first time to um, think about what they really want to get out of it and, um, and also um, read up on, on the information. Um, Leafwell does, our website does provide a, a really great resource on sort of how to navigate the space and how to understand um, how cannabis works with the body. Um, and so I, I sort of recommend to people who are using it to, to, do, the, to do the research and then uh, bring their questions to the doctor's consultation. All of the providers on our network are really knowledgeable, uh, really caring, and will be able to answer your questions. Um, the other thing I'd say with that, Alana, is that using cannabis as medicine is very much a journey. And, um, you know, we, 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 we say this a lot at Leafwell, and, um, but, the, you know, perhaps one of the most exciting things about the cannabis plant is that it has the potential to provide um, individualized medicine. And the reason for that is because we each have uh, an endocannabinoid system and each of our endocannabinoid system is different from everyone else's. And so the way cannabis um, interacts with our own body and perhaps helps us will be different to, to someone else. So um, I, I would say to manage sort of expectations, this is very much a journey and our doctors, our, our sort of providers are not, are not there just for the beginning of the journey, but really throughout your journey. And it might take some time to find your sort of therapeutic dose, um, but we're, we're very much there to support you throughout and it's, it's a relationship and a lot of that is to do with sort of education. And how does that um, work like from a practical sense? Yeah, please go for it. I'll ask my question yeah, after. No, no, sure, sure. So, as a as a physician who certifies patients who qualify in multiple states, um, and has a role of 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 overseeing things uh, as well, I I could tell you with confidence that as a patient, you will experience a seamless process from any of our extraordinarily empathetic providers from our practice. They're great. Um, after you complete your registration you enter a virtual waiting room immediately and a clinician picks up your HIPAA compliant chart within a very short period of time. We connect with you and get to learn about you and your story of why you're at the point of needing to go the route of medical cannabis. Um, we see a gamut of conditions and pathologies all day long. So no issue is too complicated for us to handle with you. Our objective, however, is not to just certify you quickly as other companies uh, might do, we're interested in, in establishing a provider-patient relationship that we hope can last for a very long time. So we will get into your story, not just to provide concise documentation of why you qualify your particular state's criteria, but also for another important reason. Our company works with national partners to 
provide cutting edge research, trying to take medical cannabis to a whole new level. As pioneers in the field, we need notes to reflect back on as we track progress. Again, HIPAA compliant, of course. Uh, all of us globally in the medical field are just scratching the surface as to what medical cannabis just can do. We're hoping to find new ways and even better ways of helping you all who suffer from conditions that necessitate this kind of treatment. And I would say, Lewis, if you could maybe elaborate a bit, one of the things that perhaps viewers want to know is what is it like in front of the platform speaking to a provider like you? Because I think, um, I think most patients find after the experience that it is an overwhelmingly positive one and not one that's sort of quick and rush, but one where providers like Lewis and those in our network really want to gain you know, perspective on a patient's condition and their goals of care using cannabis. Uh, Alana, as we've discussed on a, on a podcast together, Leafwell really hopes to bring the medical model um, to the cannabis space. And um, Lewis, perhaps maybe elaborate on, let's say, a common condition C, something like pain. Sure. You know, what, what would it be like to, to get on the platform put in your patient information and get face to face with someone like you, maybe walk us through something that, or a scenario like that. Sure, you know, let's let's talk about two very uh, common scenarios that people come to us about um, and how we would, you know, talk to them about it. Uh, let's, let's take, um, Let's take chronic pain first, actually. You know, so I would I would talk with you about the duration of time that you've been suffering with your chronic pain, where it's located, what type of uh, injury caused it or what your underlying medical condition is that's causing it. And then we're going to um, uh, delineate exactly what kind of day-to-day -day limitations or issues you might have where pain's experienced from if you're standing for long periods or sitting for long periods or walking for long periods or bending or lifting heavy objects or even trying to sleep through the night and you're having issues in any or all of those categories, that's important to, to identify. Is it impacting you at work? Is it impacting you in your personal life? What kind of consultations have you taken with specialists thus far? Um, have you obtained any radiographic studies or blood work? Uh, if you have um, you know, taken any over-the-counter or prescription medications, and have they helped? And if you've had any kind of injection therapy, perhaps with pain management, and has that helped? And I, I think that's important to establish and, and, you know, to really decide if this is right for you. You know, there are people who get on the platform and it may not be right for them. And we're honest with you. You know, we're, we're a very upfront and honest company. Um, but it also helps us, you know, I, I'm appreciate not just those that really genuinely need it, but even with with the research protocols that, that we're diving into all over the place, uh, all, nationally, that, that we're doing, it gives us litmus tests to, you know, and reference points to be able to go back to and track objectively, um, you know, which we could talk for hours about that, but it, it just, it just, it establishes an, an objectivity that, you know, we're, we're able to, to help them. And, and, you know, don't be afraid of reaching out to us about mental health issues too. Mental health is a very big thing. I'd say probably, the two biggest issues that I deal with are chronic pain issues and uh, PTSD slash anxiety kind of issues. And in, in, a, in a PTSD uh, kind of a uh, consultation, I would talk about if you have concurrent anxiety and or depression, uh, what kind of physical manifestations are being caused by this, such as headaches, stomach aches, insomnia. Is this impacting you at work again? Is this impacting you in your personal life? Um, are you having panic attacks? And if so, uh, what does that look like to you? Are, are you just uh, having mild ones or is it, does it go beyond jitteriness and heart racing? Are you having shortness of breath and dizziness and near syncopal episodes, which are almost passing out episodes, that feeling of impending doom? I, I think that gives us a, more of an appreciation of to what extent your panic attacks are. Um, what prescription medications you've been on? If so, was it prescribed by a psychiatrist or by your primary care? Were there side effects involved? Were you trying herbal supplements? Are you seeing a therapist? These are all important things to uh, to establish. So I, I want the, the listeners out there to understand it, that if you give us the privilege of taking care of your medical needs, we, we really dive deep and take it seriously. Um, so uh, I hope we get the opportunity to help you out. Yeah, and I think um, to tie points that both Emily and Lewis made, I think there's a two-part relationship to the, the medical cannabis experience. And the first is to be an informed patient 
And we certainly provide the resources to do that and to be an open patient with an empathetic provider and have a real candid conversation. You know, things that Lewis brought up and things that he discusses in, in consultations with patients really um, focus on goals of care. We, we as, a, as, a, as a practice and as a company never um, pitch that cannabis is a catch-all and, and uh, you know, uh, and it's right for everyone, but it's certainly right for most people to treat most things if they're honest and candid in that consultative discussion. So, um, you know, if you do have uh, chronic pain and part of that pain pathology is difficulty sleeping, and if we could address sleep and improve your quality of life, that would be impactful to you. That's certainly something that we can do. Um, if it's that you're on a number of medications and polypharmacy is really problematic in your care plan, um, are there opportunities to use cannabis to be able to treat a number of different manifestations of that uh, pathology by coming off of a number of different medications and focusing singularly on cannabis? So I think, um, I think we're just at the forefront of really diving into the medical model that is now cannabis medicine, and it, it is a two-way street um, which involves both informed patients and open empathetic providers. And I think that's what we do a really good job um, at bringing together on, on the platform and in the company. You know, what I really love about your approach at LeafWell, and to be honest about um, the, the, I don't know, well-integrated uh, medical cannabis treatment in general is this holistic approach, that it's not just about here, take this pill and, and off you go. It's about looking at how this fits into the patient's overall health, uh, diet, sleep, uh, exercise, um, kind of looking at the, the, the big picture. Um, and I think this kind of uh, fits with something that Emily mentioned earlier about how it's a journey. It's not just a matter of coming, getting your prescription, going to the pharmacy, and you're done. Um, so I'd love it if um, any of you, Lewis or George, could give us a bit more information about that process of guiding a patient through finding the right cannabis product to use and also uh, the dosage that works best for them and maybe even the regimen um, throughout the day if that changes. Yeah, I can, I can certainly take this question or at least the first part of it. Um, something that, that Emily mentioned, which is sort of a cornerstone of our philosophy, is that cannabis can be um, an, you know, an individualized care, but medical cannabis can be an individualized care plan. And that involves having that discussion with the provider, identifying goals of care, and, um, and constant feedback about the effects of different product formulations, dosage forms, doses, frequencies, et cetera. And so let's take a patient, for example, that Lewis um, brought up in context, and that is say, a chronic pain patient. Um, generally, we found that patients with chronic pain um, manifest a certain number of uh, related um, symptoms, whether that's insomnia, whether there's anxiety around their condition, whether there's some sort of mood affect because they don't feel well all the time. We, we talk about what those look like in real life, how they're affected, when they're affected by them the most, and then we pick regimens based around those symptoms. So for example, if a patient says, my chronic pain makes it very difficult for me to sleep, uh, the next question would be, well, how are you sleeping? How long are you sleeping for? And is it good quality sleep? And further questions would be, are you having difficulty falling asleep or are you having difficulty staying asleep? Because we can address those with different formulations. Just like any other, um, just like any pharmacy, dispensaries are equipped and uh, with a number of different formulations. And those formulations of cannabis products, whether they are tablets, pills, sublingual films, tinctures, topicals, transdermal patches, et cetera, work in different ways in terms of how quickly they work, for how long they work, and what the effects of those products have on individual patients. We can use products that work very quickly to address acute symptoms, um, and those could be as needed. We can use uh, products or medicine that work long-term, so throughout the day to maintain symptoms. And so for a lot of patients who come in with an open mind, we incorporate a lot of journaling, um, and we start low and go slow, and we make small tweaks in the beginning to really focus on what has worked and what has not worked so well. And for what hasn't worked so well, we identify why it is that it didn't to make adjustments for the future. So it's about constant feedback. It's about coming back for follow-up. It's about being candid with 
yourself and with your providers and journaling the experience so that we can help not only you, but share your experience anecdotally with other patients to help impact their care plans too. You know, the, the only thing I would add to that is, um, you know, uh, well, something that, that George was talking about and, and, and I'll just echo it is that, you know, in medicine very often slow and steady wins the race. You know, the instinctual feeling of a patient coming to see you when they're in despair and all these conditions, as you can only imagine, if you haven't experienced it firsthand, you're in despair and nothing short of that is doctor. Um, I need you to help me yesterday, you know, and you, know, you want to be helped right away. And, um, you know, it's not just a societal thing that we all need quick fixes today. This is, you know, you're, you're desperate with a, with a chronic condition. So we understand that, but just because you've had poor experiences, either in side effects or poor experiences in, in efficiency in treatment or efficacy in treatment, um, this is a brand new treatment for you. And, you know, don't go in with the expectation that medical cannabis needs to work on me in an hour, or this is not going to work for me either. And I, and I have no chance of, you know, anything helping me. Be patient. You know, this will work. And one of the beautiful things about this is the ceiling, for the most part, with medical cannabis is a little higher or a lot higher than, you know, heavier duty or options, certainly opioid options. So, you know, just, you have to give it a chance. And that's one of the beautiful things about resources like us and like wonderful pharmacists out there in, um, in dispensaries whose states have pharmacists handling and not physicians is if you have the right person handling your, your dosing and managing your case, um, you can get it right. And, and as a pediatrician for 26 plus years, I'll tell you that especially holds true. It's all you parents out there trying to help your children that are suffering. I feel for you. I, I really, 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 really do. And so with that in mind, be patient, be patient, and you will, you'll get to the finish line. I promise you. Lewis, I want to get uh, in a minute, we'll come back to pediatric cannabinoid treatment, but I just want to kind of ask one follow up there. Uh, George, you mentioned uh, formulations, so different consumption or delivery methods. Um, that you recommend to patients that they can try out. What about chemical profiles? Do you, do you give them something to start with there? Sure, certainly. Um, and so I, I think this sort of addresses the question of, are there, um, are there certain characteristics that we associate with certain strains of cannabis, um, whether dominant hybrids or, or, uh, or so forth? And what is, for me, the most interesting part of medical cannabis programs is that you now see a shift from general plant profiles to focusing in on individual cannabinoid components. And so one of the, the things that we're able to do using medical cannabis products is identify products with, um, with the, the cannabinoid constituency that may help one condition over the next. Um, one, so, so here's generally my approach is um, are your symptoms more acute and infrequent, or are there constant symptoms that you wish to treat? And what are those? If they are symptoms that are associated with an inflammatory process, a musculoskeletal process, or a nervous tissue process, you certainly have um, products whose components favor treatment of those conditions over others. If you have acute symptoms, whether that's an anxiety attack or trouble falling asleep, or acute pain, or acute nausea, um, certainly our oncology population um, with intermittent chemotherapeutic treatment has intermittent nausea and vomiting, and it's not constant. So there, there are medications that cater or formulations that cater to those. Um, when choosing products, whether it's a discussion with us, whether it's research on either one of our platforms um, or a discussion with the operators, um, uh, dispensary operator staff, um, look at the components of the products. What are ratios of THC, CBD? What is the terpene profile? What other endo, what other cannabinoids are in that product that work with the endocannabinoid system to help with sleep, to help with mood, to help with affect? And what are you comfortable taking in terms of dosage form? Uh, we certainly have a lot of patients who say, you know, I'm not comfortable with uh, vaporized or inhaled products. Um, and generally, those are the ones with quickest onset and shortest duration of action. So are there things that can help me with acute symptoms that I don't have to use uh, via inhalation method? And we certainly have those. 
films and sublingual tablets and tinctures that can get rapidly absorbed or quickly and last for a shorter period of time than things like orally ingested products, um, whether those are tablets or capsules or edible products, et cetera. And so it really, just to go back to what Emily said, we are having just, I mean, it's, it's almost, um, we're at a, we are right there on determining, you know, patient by patient that this really is an individualized journey. And so having that discussion and, and journaling and talking and being open and coming to follow up, we can certainly find the appropriate products with the appropriate cannabinoid profiles and the appropriate dosage forms to help treat those acute and chronic symptoms at the comfort level of the patient. Great. Um, Lewis, I said I was going to come back to you talking about uh, pediatric treatment. So we've been speaking, obviously, up until this point, uh, mainly about adult uh, conditions and symptoms uh, that cannabis can help. Um, but parents are looking to this sort of treatment uh, for their children um, for a number of different conditions. And, and this is, you know, taken up the chunk of your career, um, I presume, Lewis. I'm, I'm interested to hear, first of all, what kind of stigmas that you come across. Um, both on the patient side and maybe from within the medical community, um, when you recommend that a parent might want to explore um, a cannabis treatment for their child. And I suppose if you have any powerful stories or, or kind of anecdotes um, that you've experienced uh, while, while consulting parents and, and their children. Absolutely. All right. Um, stigmas. Stigmas are interesting. Sometimes they're useful roadblocks when driving on a treacherous road. And sometimes they're blinders from helping us to see perhaps a better path to travel on. There was a time that people didn't believe in penicillin too. Full transparency, as a pediatrician for 26 plus years, I've lectured many a college student on a yearly physical about the dangers of smoking marijuana. But I've learned later on in my career that if the condition is warranted, the dosing is appropriate, and the other measures attempted have been futile, a parent does not have to feel apologetic, nor does a physician for that matter, in considering using medical cannabis as a treatment option. Okay, so as just about every state's guidelines, patients, including pediatric ones, can be cleared from medical marijuana use if they suffer from conditions such as cancer, epilepsy, HIV or AIDS, Crohn's disease, chronic pain, severe nausea, terminal illnesses, PTSD, and autism so far in Colorado, Delaware, Georgia, Illinois, Iowa, Louisiana, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Texas, Utah, and Puerto Rico, and states that allow for a medical cannabis use for debilitating conditions whatever the conditions are at the doctor's discretion include California, Florida, Massachusetts, Oklahoma, Oregon, Washington, DC. So let's throw them into the mix here. I don't have to convince this audience how helpful medical marijuana can be for patients who suffer from conditions that they can find benefit from it. So there's a lot of help for children as well, which is great. Approved on a state level, no issues, just to be clear. Um, I remember back in my pediatric residency years ago, like almost 30 years ago, I had a very, very, uh, a, a patient very, very dear to me, Frankie, 13-year-old boy with a peanut, a perineuroectodermal tumor. It started in his lungs. It spread to his bones. He was in a lot of pain. What it took to get the ethics committee of the hospital to clear him from Marinol, which is a form of medical marijuana in a pill, to take away his pain, it was like moving mountains. Frankie would never have had to suffer nearly as much today as he did back then. God, God bless his soul. So we've come a really long way. Um, now let's look at this a little further. I've had pediatric patients who failed on multiple different meds, go on CBD therapy alone or CBD below dose THC therapy, and it significantly diminished their anxiety, depression, and OCD. And the same is held true for patients previously failing on multiple meds who were autistic patients and selective mutism patients who weren't talking and all of a sudden started talking or began talking significantly more. And this was without any extra therapies or changing up their present modalities. I've had children declassified for being on the spectrum. I kid you not. Imagine what happens when we get this word out and even more parents get their children on this kind of therapy. Oh, and I got one other great story, actually. So, um, a few years ago, I had this family I'm really close with. 
have an 18 month old child with a rare tumor behind the eye growing into his brain. As you can imagine, they were scared for his life, literally. They went to the best pediatric oncologist in Manhattan, New York, settled on a world famous institution, and they started hemo chemotherapy. The tumor was tracked and as per serial MRIs, it just was not shrinking. It got bigger actually. So before it became part of New York State's legal criteria, the parents on their own reached out to doctors in California. They researched it extensively and got their son on cannabis. They did not tell the oncologist because at the time they were afraid that they may disqualify him from any treatment uh, protocols that their son would, would you know, end up being on and that they may even call CPS on them. But we're tight, so they confided in me. He went for his next MRI three months later. And guess what? The tumor shrunk. It did. And the doctors were just utterly mystified. And their only explanation was it was a miracle. They had no other explanation. And the tumor never grew bigger again. Wow. Very powerful. Um, Lewis, I wanted to ask you what kind of questions you get from parents that have maybe heard you know, about, about success of other children um, using cannabis treatments and they come to you. What's the kind of process that they go through normally? Well, certainly it's been a shift for years because parents would never bring it up at one point. You know, I, I've run one of the, the, the one of the busiest pediatric practices in, in, in Long Island, New York for a long time. I'm, I'm, I'm now down in Florida. Uh, I'm actually, um, um, and there's been such a shift in mindset for a while that parents would never even think about bringing that up to. I heard about this and I'm kind of desperate and I don't know what else to do to now parents are provoking those conversations. And, you know, um, we, we don't have to um, shut off all possibilities in life to, to new possibilities when every other measure is not helping as I was talking to earlier on in the show. And, um, you know, parents, I think parents need, validation that what they're hearing is true you all well, well it's wonderful to have a, a network on social media to turn to when no one else is giving you answers they also want to hear from their doctor who they trust you know they, they really do and i think it's an obligation for all of us doctors whether you're a pediatrician uh you know or you're any other kind of doctor i think we owe it to ourselves to always be informed we can't get stuck in our sulfur way so to speak and just like when, you know, drug reps come into our office and they educate us on new products that are coming out, we owe it to them to listen to them and give us and, and give them our ear um, because, you know, we have to continue to learn and grow or we'll, we'll never stay current. And and so I think this is something that we all are obligated to stay current about and find out for ourselves. And there are protocols in place now. There are doctors who help states set up um this being legal as an option if you meet your state's particular criteria and of course every state is different so people listening in from all over your state may have a different criteria in new york versus florida versus rhode island versus maine you know it, it it's different of course colorado and california are, are very different to itself you know so um but you know i would encourage when a when a parent would come to me you know talk to me uh, about what you're concerned about and you know tell me about where, where your trepidation lies and tell me you know what you've tried up to now if it's a new patient and if it's a patient i've been tracking for a while obviously i'm going to know what you know that they've been going through up to now and um you know we shouldn't be closed-minded and that's what that's what this is really all about you know for the people out you're, you're gonna have three kinds of people in your audience you're gonna have people that are, are believers in this see i told you so i knew that they were onto something and then you're gonna have people that are like you know I am open to things, but I don't know about this. I want to tune in. And I want to learn more. And then you have your, your cynics out there, which is true with anything in life. But I think that we can't be cynical about things. We, you know, sometimes the most intelligent move that you can do in this world is being a good listener and trying to find out things and then put it to the test for yourself and find out for yourself if it works. You know, uh, yeah. George and Emily can tell you really powerful stories of what they've seen firsthand with this every day. And, you know, so can I. And we didn't conjure those up. They, they come to us. And the more and more we put ourselves out there, the more and more we hear about these things. And, and this platform is designed to share that with your audience so that everybody could, could get something from this today. And yeah. if you have further questions off of that, you reach out to us. We're here for you. And we're going to try to our best, you know, to help you out as well. Yeah. One of our yeah, partners. I, can I... Oh, sorry. I'm... Go ahead. No, go ahead, George. 
I just wanted to give some some sort of uh, piggyback on, on Lewis and, and, and Alana's question about questions parents have specifically given that, you know, a, a partner and I here, one of our partners and I here have a pretty robust pediatric patient population in the, in the palliative care and hospice um, context. And a lot of, pa you know, as a concerned parent, your first question is always, is this safe and effective for my child? And, um, and the second question is, what, what is the approach to treatment? And if you take the time that Lewis described to have that candid conversation to say, um, these are all of the treatment options you've tried. The, the, these are the side effects and the potential risks of those treatments. And here is the safer alternative to treat the same thing. Um, it opens up the discussion. Then when they, as, as we all are making sort of a transition from what we thought cannabis was to now sort of a new age approach to say, hey, you're not getting your kid, you know, stoned. There are, there are medication regimens and medication uh, consumption methods that are very akin to a traditional, uh, to traditional uh, medications that, that children would take, tinctures, uh, drops, tablets, tubules, et cetera. And we have a huge patient population that is pediatric um, that, I, that I've dealt with in the past. And um, we're able to wean kids off of some of the, the harsher medications with a safer alternative. And, and then this, the word sort of spreads that parents tell other parents who maybe whose children may be affected by the same conditions about their experience and, and sort of just like everything in this industry, it's a grassroots movement. So I think just being open, honest and educated um, and having real conversations helps. Yeah, and and really just to just to piggyback on of what uh, both Lewis and George said, um, you know, we we find that the the main reason people don't try this is because of the stigma, because of the the years of misinformation and disinformation, and you know we're really thankful that that conversation has moved from this being sort of the last resort for lots of people to something they consider consider right at the beginning. Um, but I feel like um, as Lewis said earlier, we're we're really at the the very beginning where we really just sort of um, um, which is at the tip of the iceberg and um, there's a lot of work to do and so um, providing sort of uh, uh, you know licensed physicians that people can can access very can access very easily and quickly um, is sort of one step education is a, is a massive part of that as well and sort of providing evidence-based medicine so that's really what we're we're working towards and it's very much um, as George mentioned, a two-way journey. Um, we really, we really want to hear from people. We really want to hear your questions. We're continually um, looking to educate ourselves as well. You know, I, I would like to just interject one other tangible thing that I think would be really important for the cynics out there, um, the parents that aren't sure, and even the doctors tuning in that are like, ah, this, this stuff. I would never condone this. So, you know, one of the many things that I, I really have taken a passion to is pharmacogenetic testing. And I can talk to you about this for hours. I've lectured nationally on this, but I'm going to keep it really concise here. We have um, an enzyme system in our liver called the CYP450 system. And there's an enzyme system that exists within it. And there are different enzymes that are utilized or activated to break down different medications, depending on which medication you're using or which medications, plural. And that is important here. That you, that you are using. So the parents are like, I'm not doing medical cannabis, but I'll put my, my child who is low functioning autistic on Abilify or Geodon or you know, a combination of these heavy, heavy duty drugs. You know, if you decide to look and do pharmacogenetic testing on, the, on these children, where it's really, it's a swab inside of your cheek. 20 seconds here, 20 seconds here, you send it out to a lab. My favorite lab in the country, hands down, is in Columbia, Missouri. Um, it's, uh, it's, uh, gene trade and, uh, Shelly Beckwith runs the best lab in the, in the world actually with this. It's dead on accurate, uh, from all my experiences, it's been unbelievable. But so let's say that you're deficient in an enzyme that would normally, um, um, activate this medication. Then maybe the reason why you are having bad side effects is because of that. And what happens if all the other medication, all the other medications that your neurologist or psychiatrist, or maybe maybe your progressive pediatrician has been using for years and you've had nothing but side effects, maybe everything that's running through that same enzyme pathway can't get activated because you're deficient in that enzyme. And you never knew that because you never looked. Well, guess what? You're not you're not gonna have that issue 
with medical cannabis. Uh, you know, if anything, with medical cannabis, and it's a long story, if anything, it, it may inhibit some of these enzymes a little bit. But, you know, it, you're not going to run into those same kind of issues. Uh, it's very well tolerated for almost the most part. Almost. You never say 100% with anything. But, but my point being is that, you know, okay, so if you're cynical about it and you're not sure, why don't you go run this profile on your patient and, and go find it out? And if you're having deficiencies in those areas, then maybe by default, you have no other choice but to use that. And um, let me tell you, I've stopped counting after a thousand of these tests. I've run thousands of these tests. And it is mind boggling how many people have these kind of issues. And those people that have those issues, they don't have to deal with, you know, side effect after side effect after side effect with medications yeah. because we have to use traditional medication. So um, you should think about that. You know, if you're if you're going to be cynical about this process, well, it certainly supports really an individualized approach to medicine. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think uh, you know, like Emily wrapped it up really well that we're just at the beginning of the journey now of, of the cannabis treatments being available around the world um, safely um, and easily and in an uh, affordable manner. Um, however, it really seems from, from, you know, everything that we've talked about here tonight that we're moving in the right direction. And I think that's the important thing. Um, so I think this is a good place for us to wrap up tonight. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. Um, and I'll remind you, everyone listening that you can visit leafwell.co and use the code Canigma on the screen, C-A-N-N-I-G-M-A, and that gives you $10 off your first consultation. Um, and Thank obviously you so feel free to get in touch. Um, with Emily and with Lewis and with George, if you have any other questions. And uh, we hope you guys will join us again. Shalom. Shalom. Thanks for joining us. Bye. <laughs>